swiftly on to Poland, and there's Paul Polanski from Kosminski University, who's going to talk about liability of intermediaries and giving us a Polish perspective, mainly from industry. Yeah? Yeah, give me a second. Okay. All right, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul Polanski from Poland, not from Holland. Um, and I'll try to give you a very short perspective on liability of intermediaries, especially posting liability, um, under Polish circumstances. So um, it's not going to be um, a typical legal um, presentation, as I'm going to focus more on private enforcement. That you will, uh, at least two examples of private enforcement. Um, in Poland. So let's start with a brief, very brief overview of the um, assessment of implementation of directive, e-commerce directive under Polish law. With respect to Article 14, I'll just focus on this one. I would say it's 90% correct implementation. Only 90% uh, because, for instance, we don't have this distinction that you will find in the directive, e-commerce directive, that distinguishes between criminal and civil liability. Right? And you've got different conditions for civil and criminal liability. We've got only one set of conditions for both. So this is not a major issue, but it would help, especially the industry, if we had the tougher weapon uh, in uh, civil, civil proceedings. With respect to the country of origin principle, which is the second uh, issue, you've mentioned the case of Article 3, uh, Paragraph 4 under Spanish law. Well, uh, under Polish perspective, uh, from the Polish perspective, uh, we've basically uh, forgotten about certain aspects of country of origin. We don't have the positive aspect of the country of origin principle. We don't have uh, the urgency procedure and few other things that you could use to um, fight uh, illegal content coming from other member states. With respect to IP injunctions that could be um, issued uh, against intermediaries based on copyright directives, um, aforementioned Article 8, uh, Paragraph 3 of Directive 2001-29, Article 11 of Directive Enforcement Directive, uh, it's not present, as in Germany. Um, all right, so having said that, um, IP right holders might have some <coughs> issues with respect to enforcing their rights. Um, and they do. And, and the local courts actually struggle and uh, the industry is, uh, is losing the battle. However, there are some interesting uh, examples of private enforcement uh, where the big players, e-commerce players, actually help the industry um, to solve these issues. And um, one example deals with Allegro here. Allegro is the biggest e-commerce site in Poland, uh, which counts for basically 50% of turnover. Um, that e-commerce generates um, in Poland. And um, essentially, they've established a large group um, that deals with um, infringements. Infringements related to trademark infringements, copyright um, infringements, uh, illegal speech. They essentially, uh, out of their own will, uh, go through auction descriptions, they go through profiles of individual users, and try to actively um, find um, reasons to take actions. What kind of action do they take? Well, uh, there is a set of, um, of sanctions they apply out of their own will. The first one would be just the warning uh, that is being issued. Uh, the second level of sanctions are temporary suspensions of certain functionalities of the account. And for many players, e-commerce players, this is a heavy sanction because they sell a lot uh, via this platform. The third level is temporary blocking of an account and finally a termination uh, of an account. And this model of private enforcement of, in this case, IP rights, actually works. Uh, what is interesting is the fact that um, Allegro, under the EU law, is not being treated that favorably because of the passive test 
right? The technical automotive passive test um, that the European Court of Justice came up with uh, in the Google France case. Well, because they are acting actively, they actually lose the protection right? under Article 14 and 15. But still, they do it because they are acting as they believe in the interest of their own company, but actually they are helping the whole industry. This is the second case, the hamster case, home equipped here. This is a smaller website um, that um, publishing industry we have been fighting with for many years now. They are like Dropbox business, but uh, they allow everyone to upload whatever files they like, and they provide links uh, to these files. And of course, uh, a lot of users uh, of the service um, actually publish their pirated books, also legal books. So many law students uh, actually <coughs> share uh, books on this platform. Uh, not even uh, law students, uh, even young adults do it. They got used to it uh, while being students and now they can transfer this know-how uh, to their professional career. The funny thing is that they originated in Poland, uh, but they quickly realized that it's going to be safer if they move out of Poland, and now they are based in Cyprus. So they are truly providing uh, information society services uh, from another member state. Uh, well, the interesting thing is that now they comply with notices, and they do take the content down. However, the publishing industry is not particularly happy uh, with the solution because essentially one publisher has to send up to 2,000 notices per day. This is how active the service is. However, under the European law, they are working, they operate legally, right? Um, they are passive, they do not examine the contents of the website. Whenever they receive a notice, they block or put the content down. So, under the current framework, everything is fine. Is it? From the perspective of the industry, um, it looks like this. Those who are active are being actually punished under the current framework, under at least the possibility test developed by the European Court of Justice. Those who are passive and develop their business model around it, right? saying that, okay, fine, we'll let everyone show whatever they like on their platforms, and we'll just put the content down as soon as, you, as, soon as we receive the notice, uh, they're going to be protected. Is it really what we want? Um, I think uh, I think we could rethink uh, this model. Um, I think we could offer a bit more of a protection and incentive to those companies who are actually more active and are willing to invest money uh, into um, a location of illegal content and give less of a protection to those who stay passive. But I know that this is this is a difficult uh, difficult decision to be made. Uh, it's not an easy problem. In IP cases, this may work fine, but not necessarily with respect to other types of harmful content that you will find in cyberspace or, or uh, cybersecurity um, cases. Uh, I promised to myself, because it was supposed to be the last presentation, that uh, I won't torture you uh, with these insights. Um, so this is it from my side. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.